Hello, I'm in the video for my daddy. Alright, buddy. So what's going on today? Is we're gonna be getting to meet Jeff. Um Jeff Elliott's been on YouTube for a little bit. He's been helping Brian out over at Got Fuels. We're gonna talk about a couple aspects of the hobby. Um it's gonna be an interesting chat, especially in the chat. So hopefully we can get through this. Um all right. Here we go. What's going on, guys? What's going on, hey, Josh, thank you for having me. And um, just to make it clear, I was smart enough to hit the private chat so I didn't see our class clowns in action. <laughs> class clowns? Yeah, okay. That That's, yeah, okay. I'm because serious. otherwise all you're going to have me sitting here is laughing. <laughs> No, it they're 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 having a fun time. They're yep. having a fun time. So, and I know it, I know they're not going to roast me to be mean. They're doing it fun because it's a friendship. So, right, right, which is one of the cool aspects of the modeling community, mm -hmm. in my opinion. We all can have a good time, joke around, but it's not too serious. And when it gets serious, it gets serious and quickly. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for everybody in this community. And I really got to say thank you to Jason Hanscom for opening me to this community. Yeah. That, that's something I, I, and Brian and Fred, yourself and others, you know, this community takes the people in and makes them feel welcome. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> really? <no. laughs> right. Tell me how you really feel, Brian. <laughs> All right, Jeff. So how did you get started in the modeling community or in the modeling thing? Um, a gentleman who I uh, who lived with my family for from like eighth grade till a couple of years after he graduated. And I call him my brother, Doug. He lived five houses up from us. And as some people can't always get along with each other's family, Doug moved in with us. And that's where I found about found out about modeling. And I still do that with him in some capacity to this day. And, and that's, that's such a wonderful thing to me that that makes this hobby special. Right. But right. that. As, as he was out of it for a while because he raised his family, he came back to it because of me. And he said, you know, look, it's life's full circle. I got out of it. You got into it. <laughs> but it, well, it's all the memories we make that make it fun and enjoyable. Right. And, it, and it's supposed to be a hobby, which we all enjoy, right? Doesn't matter if it takes you... 20 minutes to put the kit together or five years to put the kit together. It's, it's all, it's all awesome at the end of the day. Right. Yep. And I, I really like that. The fact that you brought that point up, it's we're all in the same hobby, no matter the skill levels or how much time and dedication we can put into it, into our craft. It's meant to be enjoyed and fulfilling. Yeah, this, the other spin I would put to that, and a lot of the modeling shows are guilty of this. There's more to this hobby than just model cars. Yep. There are tanks, ships, figures. 3D printing has really boosted that, too. Oh, you mean the 3D cheated, cheating parts, as one person told me? <laughs> you know what? It's a joke, Ross. It's a joke. <laughs> It's all a great aspect. 
it, it takes all of this stuff. If it wasn't for the people that kit, kit bash or scratch built, would we even have 3D stuff? Yes. Yes. The answer to that is yes. So it, it all, it, you know, everything evolves over time how to do it. And every, every part type of kit and every part has its challenges. 3D has its challenges as well. You know, right. cleaning them up off, off the runs and stuff like that. It, I, you know? I know I get a lot of shit for this comment, but five, six years from now, I don't think they're going to be manufacturing kit. They're going to be manufacturing STL files. You know, I, I was watching, I believe it was one of your episodes, and, and somebody was talking about that. Yes and no. Depends on every situation because not everybody's going to want a printer or everybody can afford a printer. By then, you know, the, the technology is going to change. It's going to grow by leaps and bounds. And, and I, I, you know, I agree There, there's a great aspect to it. But, you know, if you get the filaments where you've got more lines, somebody's going to go, well, I don't want to sand it off. I want a smooth body like the kit. So I can see maybe a combination of both. I know, uh, I believe it's round two. They do a lot of their changing on their kits with 3D printing stuff. All their new Star Wars kits that they came out with are all 3D printed. That's how they got their, their masters. You okay, can look so at it straight in the, in, the, in the kit. Some of the kits that I've, I've done over the last couple of years, they're all 3D printed. You can see no. the you can see the lines in them. So that takes a lot of sanding and stuff to, to clean them out or, or or fillers. Right. It it but even with resin, they're getting there there's printers out there that'll print out a full body. They're <laughs> they're out there now. It's just yeah. a matter of time. And, and this is where I'm lucky. Um we got a couple of gentlemen in chat, Brian and Fred, and unfortunately our friend Don and my friend Jason Klein, who do unbelievable 3D parts. And one of the things I noticed from Jason Klein's parts that he gave me is the header flange and the exhaust flange were literally, you could mate them up together and you could put a piece of metal rod through it to make it look like it was a real car. And it was just astonishing. Yeah, and then, and then there's this aspect of it. Printing yep. stuff out becomes a hobby all on its own. And then there's enough people doing it, you just buy part. And, and you know, in, in every aspect, uh, you got a lot of the big companies that do it. And then you got smaller companies that are starting to come into it. And I think it, it, they all play a, a significant role in it. And it helps, I think, literally helps the hobby, the quality of the builds and presentation of the models. But I also look at the guys who scratch build and go, okay, the, the, you know, how they do it and alter the bodies and stuff like that. To be a one-off versus sitting at a computer doing drafting and stuff and making a one-off. It's, it's, it's like I, a woodworker making furniture. It, it's just right. something you like doing with your hands personally. So everybody's going to have their different spin on it. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's really nothing wrong with that. Either, either way, either way you slice that apple, mm -hmm. it's totally cool. And no. that's the great part. Why do I have? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I figured Brian was already starting with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's no. Yeah, no. It. It. I think the 3D printing part of it is just going to get better for us over time. Like just in the last two years, it's grown night and day difference. Just just in the quality of parts we're seeing, that's because people are taking the time to actually make the per parts. And that's the that's the hard part. Yep. But you get those guys over in China and Japan and all that community start 
starting to make files, yeah, it, it's gonna it's gonna take off again. It's it's crazy, but yeah. And you know, and, and we all know how that that whole process works, is, which I'm not crazy about. I'm sorry, Bob, to to disappoint you, uh, but you got bad job today. <laughs> <laughs> okay um anyway so what you started your youtube channel okay yep. and you're, you're kind of starting to do a really cool concept with the hangouts talk about that and that, how that process has been going for you there's a lot of things and, and i'm not going to be just rushing to do something for the sake of doing it I need to learn it and understand it so mentally I can process it and go ahead. Eventually, and this is going to be put off until next, until probably late next fall, do a, a concept like this, but there's going to be two people on screen discussing different aspects of modeling, but the build, focusing on the building part itself to understand how maybe they can talk, say something about how painting they paint the other guy can say, okay, this is how I do it. And somewhere in the middle, somebody who's watching the video, it will dawn on them how to do it. I'm a, I'm a hands-on learner. You give me a book and I, I won't understand it. You, you show me and I'll pick it up. It'll take me a while, but I will get it. And then I'll, cause that's the way I process things. Right. No, I, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Um, no, that's, that's a cool concept. I, and you know, you know it, that'll be interesting. Who's going to be the other guy, or are you just going to rotate people in? Um, it was going to be a good friend of ours, but he is uh, unable to do it right now. We need to worry about him taking care of some other matters first. Um, until then, uh, Jason Klein has offered to step in and do it, be the host on camera. I'll be the one moderator in the back to keep everything cosmetic. It, it, keep everything calm in chat because it is going to be 100% family friendly show for builders nine to 90. Well, that's cool. I, 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 when we talked about this offline, I, I thought it was a really cool idea. The only thing it, that I'm going to, I'm going to suggest to you is you need to be on screen. That's my only comp complaint. You need to be on screen instead of in the background. Because you do bring a lot of knowledge and stuff that you've done also to this. You know, that's part of it. But I really want the conversations to be organic, like we're sitting down now and having, right. you know, it, it's for a lack of a better term. The, the one thing I miss about scale auto enthusiasts was the art, the well-written articles that brought the car, the model to life. And you, you had to kind of connect, felt the connection to it. And okay. I want to kind of bring that, that element into it. Yeah. I, I can talk a lot and, and try to get people in the right direction, but it takes somebody that's far better spoken than myself. And Jason Klein is an unbelievably knowledgeable individual in the real world and as an engineer. So you tried it. I had a boss once tell me you could have the 10 smartest men in the room. But it doesn't mean you're going to be successful unless you put everyone in a certain place to succeed together. Right. And that's how I kind of view it. And, and I want it, I want it to represent because and I'll say this point blank. I got this idea from watching your show. But with a difference, my spin on it. Right. And that, that's, that's cool. I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, this, this has changed from when I started. It wasn't always this format, right? I, I was able to get good people on here, you know, and still can, and, you know, there's people that, you know, if I needed to, I could have them come on in any moment. Um, but you know, it's, it's a process. You know, 
and that's and Brian just hit on something. We all have something to offer this hobby. And that's something I've taken away from everybody in the hobby. And that is that's something that a lot of these guys have started, and I hope to continue to honor them going forward as much about I want to honor the Josh Rise and the the guys who built this community up and keep it stabilized and, and let that next generation come in and take over. If that makes sense to you. Yeah. I mean, there's what I call pillars of the community, right? And yep. whether Fred agrees with this or not, he's one of them now. Right. Brian's hang out another, another pillar of the community. And then you have channels like, uh, Matthews, I cannot remember his name, but it's Matthew just, Winman, Mall right. Car Video. Yep. There's yeah, and like Jason, Blue Ox, yeah, BG. The thing that he, those three have been doing with, um, I can't Luke, remember the other guy. Luca, Luca, yeah. I, those guys are doing great stuff too. They're, you know, there's new pillars of the community that pop up and it just brings everybody up to a certain level. And then it kind of, you know, and, and yeah. And that's the thing It's you build a solid foundation and you, you can build from there. Right. Right. And, and the cool part about this is we all have no problem sharing knowledge. Yep. And, and I think that's, that's the, difference in a, a lot of our communities that you know some people will not share not share one bit it's yep. that's their secret and they're dying with that secret and that's not necessarily our community our community will bend over backwards to help one another brian you are more than you realize and, and that's the thing. Brian and Fred are such humble human beings. And Josh, I can actually say that about you too. Mm -hmm. You know, no. Nope. In your own way, it, it, it's not in the same way as maybe Fred or Brian, but it's in your own unique way. And and you've opened my eyes to a lot of things I never knew possible, especially making plastic look like wood if it was not for you i i wouldn't be trying things to do it and get better someday i will get it, it might be five years from now it might be two months i don't know when i get it i'll get it jeff within 10 minutes i can get you to do that and it'll look just like wood. i'm not even not even kidding it's not it's not it's not as hard the guy i learned from does it with oils and that takes forever but yeah. And that's why I say everybody has a significant part in this community. And that's what makes it a great, probably the greatest community to me in the world. All right. So we've covered all that, right? Yep. So you're going to start that in the fall. I hope to have, it won't be until after ACME, which I should know sometime in the next two weeks if I'm going to be able to make that. If not, then I'll shift my gears towards that. Wait, ACME's late in the year, isn't it? And late sept late October. Oh, okay. I, okay, that's not so late. Okay. No, that that's cool. I, it'll be interesting to see, see what you do. Now, how, how you make that all work? I, I'm, I'll be curious. I'll definitely be watching. I, I don't know if I'll jump on at any point, but there, there's going to be four to five people involved because you know we, we got to correspond, and everybody's at different time, different time zone too. So it's like, okay, we need to get all our eggs in a row, ducks in a row, so to speak. And that way it doesn't interfere with what they got going in life. I'd like to have done it this summer, but I got some out, outside hobbies that take up a lot of my time to do that. <laughs> oh, go ahead and talk about that, Jeff. That You got an interesting hobby during your summertime. Yes. Uh, I literally grew up in racing from the day out, three days old 
at a racetrack the late Ken Squires owned here in Vermont till still doing it now in some form or fashion. I don't do it on a full-time basis like I used to. I got three teams when need be. I'm going to step in and work with them at two different tracks in two completely different type cars. One's called the late model, which is a perimeter. And then we got a super late model. You can go either perimeter or straight rail that looks just like a da dragster with a box built off to the left for the driver to sit in. <laughs> oh, right. Right. And, right. you know, how, how did you get started in that? Um, my dad raced most oh, okay. all of my life. So it was something inherited. And, and I took over and I worked for a racetrack for 25 years. And for them, for the people before they sold it and we were people I'm thankful every day or the rest of my life I got to be involved with. Oh, that's cool. And some of my friends have gone on to uh, achieve very good success in, in their occupation in racing. So, And you can kind of tell that's you take a lot of that knowledge into your model kits. At least that's my perception from the outside. Yes, and yes, but the problem with that is I see a kit part. I try to, my mind works in a way that it thinks it's the real part. Well, how can I do this and do this? And I have to force myself to slow down and say, okay, it's not this. So you got to drill a hole here for a spark plug wire versus here to try to make it look as realistic possible because you don't have the room <laughs> in a model you do on a real car. And that's where I got to kind of start slowing myself. And, and, and Brian has been a great, and, and Don uh, Piggott has been great helps with that. And yeah. a host of other people, I should say, as well. Yeah, Don, Don's got a lot of knowledge there, too. I, yeah. You can tell. Uh, making all that stuff work. He definitely has a lot of knowledge there. And, and you know, it's... <laughs> And that's what the, at the end of the day, that isn't that what this hobby is about? Having fun, right. enjoying it, working with each other. Right. And this is one of the other things Fred, Fred brings up that you're super good at with the group on the community is finding that one kit. Uh, unfortunately, I was forced into a re early retirement, and apparently the, the internet has become a playground for me to find, and it's come through a de well over a decade of, of, of friendships with people in different areas of the, of the United States and Canada, and I can just be lucky enough to tap into that market and say, yeah, you got this, this guy needs this, why don't you just switch, and then you're both happy. Occasionally, a gift might find its way to somebody. <laughs> and, and there's a special reason behind that, and I really want to keep that personal to myself. A few of the fine. people in the community understand why I do it. That's cool, man. I, there's nothing wrong with that. But it it is kind of it's kind of really cool how you can, like, with someone's trying to find something, and within like, and they can't find it, and when they're like. Two minutes, you've already found like three. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, damn you. <laughs> you know, I, you know it, it all comes down to, you know, I, I'll i tell you right now, I don't put the time and effort that Fred, you, or Don put into a model. But I put it in over that area. So it kind of meets in the middle. Right. You know, it, right. It, it's a joy to see a lot of, because we don't know what molds round two has or if they've been destroyed or which Ravella Germany's allowed Atlantis to keep in that whole situation. And it's just, okay, point, point, point. And all it does is take one little thing to get row and then the next domino will fall. And if you just keep up with it, it's, Easy. And, and, uh, and point today, uh, our friend Bob, God, Lord, I'm trying to hope I don't butcher his last name, Bob Music. Yeah, that's better than I would do. 
<laughs> he's at a show and he sent me a load of photos and I'm like over here almost drooling on my phone going where is this place can you get me the information from these people <laughs> so Bob if you're listening find out who they are so I can get them yeah no I yeah that 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 is one of the unique things that you do bring to this I I'm not gonna lie you you I don't I don't know if it's eBay Craigslist if that even still exists but yes it's all of them and and one of my sources is a friend up in uh the province of Nova Scotia in Canada um he's 69 he's getting ready to retire and just enjoy life and he's got a full scale uh motion Baldwin motion Vega he's got to rebuild the motor on and he's kind of now more motivated to sell. He said, look, I'm not going to build it. Okay, boom. I got it. And, and I found out a gentleman who I met at Acme last year, his Holy Grail kit, thanks to uh, oh Lord, Mr. Darby. We found, I found, it. I was buying them regardless. And at some point it will show up at his house unannounced. <laughs> yeah, Darby. Darby has probably the third or fourth biggest collection I've ever seen. Yeah. And, he's, and, he's got a, and it's rare of the rare. Yeah. And so, you know, I found out that, that it was uh, a mutual friend of ours that wanted it. And I was like, eh, not a big deal. Just money. Because at the end of the day, you, you realize – People matter more than any amount of dollar bill will ever matter in life. I agree with that. It's yeah. And sometimes no, I, you have to go through something tragic to understand that or life altering to see what matters most. And, and to see that man smile and know he's going to build it. At the end of the day, isn't what you're supposed to do? Build them, not collect them. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. That's why I don't have a very big stash. I I I, <laughs> I building is more important to me than having every kit in the you know. And and some are, are just you know, it, one uh, one thing just recently a, a gentleman in uh, Louisville, Kentucky got one. And. He's a great builder, but he, he does a lot, especially bringing up shows and, and information to the community that I wouldn't have known otherwise. When he's literally starting to, mind you, it wasn't a big shake, but a shake holding a kit from when he was a kid. That moment is very priceless to me. Because that was a memory. Not once, but now twice you got to have. <laughs> yeah, and Fred, we know this. Trust me. <laughs> if you don't have them all by now, you're you're close to getting there, buddy. Um, there's a place I was just out in Missouri, about ten minutes from my sister. Uh, literally had eight sixty-seven Chevelles, and <laughs> I think they want me to go out and pick them up for them. <laughs> right, right. So. What act, you see the modeling community from the west east, east coast side, northern east coast, right? You're in Connecticut, right? No, I am in Vermont. Vermont, okay, close, close, close. Yeah, you're you're technically one state between us, but yes, <laughs> I lived in Connecticut for a little while. Okay, <laughs> how do you see the difference in the community from coast to coast? <clears throat> Outside of uh, a few people, you, um, Leon, I don't, you know, BG, um, and a few of the guys in Arizona, I really, there's some difference. And it's, you can look at the United States as a whole. It, it, my friend said this the best to me. He, he, we both grew up here in New Hampshire together where we lived in New Hampshire. 
He said, man, you got to move south. He said, the people are friendly and so laid back here. He said, you go to the northeast, they're cutthroat. And that's literally the attitude. And it's <laughs> and it's different geog different regions is how they view things, I guess. For the you know. And I've been to big shows like the NNL East and local shows, which when I went to yesterday I had fun. Wasn't mm -hmm. the biggest show, but it was fun. But when I went into Acme, Brian and Fred and Bob were the first three. And Bob's from the Midwest. You just felt that home right there. there. There was just something that you just felt at ease. Okay. You know, it's it's like they, they you know, going to your grandmother's and having your favorite food that she makes only. There was just some kind of comfort about it. <laughs> you would know, Michael. <laughs> I was waiting for one of them to come out. Right. No, well, please a ask, a, ask a question the way I, I give you the best answer I humanly can. So, I don't know. I, this is my take on it. From coast to coast, East Coast, it's a lot more acceptable to have a hobby like we have. West Coast, I'm playing with toys. Yeah. And it's it's funny you bring that up because me and Doug were going to a model show, and my sister said, "You guys play with toys." And after seeing her not too long ago, we discussed it, and I said, "You go on cruise ships, you go to casinos." She goes, "Yes, you have fun doing that. That's your hobby." She goes, "Yeah." Well, this is our hobby, and, and once you find a way to resonate it with them, so they understand. It helps. You're not always going to understand it fully. And it's it's great if somebody understands it more, if you bring them in and, and show them why you do it and how much inner peace it brings and it makes life more enjoyable. I don't know. To me, it just seems like the West, the West Coast, there's no, the sh modeling community, it, it's big in parts. But on the East Coast and Midwest, it just seems like it's a lot more popular. I don't know. That's my take on it. I, I was just curious to see what you thought. I It's good either way. And it's weird because they have a it, – it's sad to hear that the NNL West is coming to an end. I, I, pray, to, I pray somebody picks it up and carries, keeps it going. I don't think um, so. And it was such so. a big, beautiful – and there was such – you know, there's – some stuff in Southern California, exactly what, where, I don't know. And I, and I wish some of the, the, the one or the few remaining model magazines would start listing clubs again for people. <sighs> My fan club's at it again, I see. Don's got a good question. It's, you know. It all has to do with geography and how you're raised and the words you grew up around right. different areas y'all down south you go somewhere else somebody look at them like what are they saying and, and that happens if, if, if you know somebody makes jokes about somebody in massachusetts all the time not using ours well i can take you to other parts of boston r is everything r is in every single word it's a French, Scottish, Irish accent all combined to what they make uh, a down east accent. And yes, you ready for this, Jason? Cuda. C U D A. <laughs> all right. We got that out of the way. Uh, yeah. No, it is. <laughs> and, and it's it inherent into different areas that you will find it when you. Custom yourself to it so much all your life, it it doesn't change. I got friends from New York City that live in, in North Carolina now. Then it's funny when I talk with them and they got such a southern twang to them. It's they're acclimated to that climate now. Yeah. I don't disagree with that, Brian. 
But a lot of the modeling shows on the West Coast, it's far and in between. Yeah. On the East Coast, you could probably within a month, like this month coming up, right, from the end of March till we'll say the end of May, within 100 miles, you have a show every weekend. And, and there's something I, I can bring up. I mean, I can go look at my old scale auto enthusiast. Right. From, oh. And I could take a picture of well, where did these clubs come from? And obviously, we all different age groups age at a time. And there's almost like a void. It seems like it skips a generation and comes back. You know, and that's the one thing and the only good thing I can say about 2020. Modeling got a resurgent. Do I expect everybody to stay back in the hobby? No, but it's good. It's kind of like the old car adage. The hot rodders didn't care for the muscle car group. Muscle car care doesn't care for the the tuner group, and they don't care for whatever start next. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you're all in the same hobby. Embrace the difference and enjoy it and let it come in. And naturally, you'll find you'll have more in common than not. God, I need to stop acting like an adult. <laughs> What a guy. What a guy. Oh, here's the topic that pisses me off. It's the model shows our popularity contest with loaded ballot boxes. Yeah, that's I could see I could see both sides of the ballot. And I want to premise this so I don't get hung from a bridge, literally. People who want to pre vote for somebody because they want to, you know, you, you can't fault the modeler for that. It's that's there's something they like. I go in and vote for what I like, and I don't care what anybody else thinks. I think I, yeah. That's great. I wish everybody was like that. But unfortunately, not everybody is. Fortunately, it's about helping your buddy get that first place award a lot of the times. And, and you know, again, it's There's not the build. I mean, very rarely right. does a builder do it. But if you got a large following or something, and it's almost like a fan base, they're loyal to you and they're going to support you no matter what. Mm -hmm. And again, that's not the modeler or model YouTuber's fault or builder's fault or whoever, you know, don't blame them. Right. No, I, 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 yeah, there's, there's a lot of that though. There, there is, it, you know, it sucks, but there is a lot of that. But as I told somebody the other day, everything works great until the humans show up and screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> right right that's properly said right there <laughs> all right so we're gonna move to topics right all right what tools are you using in the hobby i use a, a wide variety and that and that's something i really get from the modeling community and doing a little research different glues for different applications i went back and watched uh, one youtuber's uh, video I'm like, okay, that still makes sense using that. So now I'll go get some testers. Red glue, two glue. Everybody's like, well, it's antiquated. It's no useful. It is. If you use the right tools with it, like a toothbrush. I mean, not to, yeah, to. <laughs> use paintbrush, a toothbrush. Yeah, paintbrush. Come on. <laughs> or a paintbrush or a uh, toothpick to apply it in certain areas that it will give a better bond to than, say, one of the clear cements. Different cements won't peel paint off where others will. So it's just finding that right one to work with that. And a lot of people have tried so many different things, especially the older gentlemen. It gives you a good baseline to where to accumulate tools. Not only skills, but your tools are the thing you're going to use to build your skills. So I got like four different types of glues now I use. Which are what? Uh, the Tamiya, uh, Mr. Hobby, Testers, and, uh, gosh. 
plaster. So I will ask this since you have both of them. Is that Tamiya and the Mr. Hobby, does that seem the same to you? For the most part, yes. I mean, I haven't seen myself real different. It's the one thing I like about the Tamiya, I know it evaporates. It still leaves a little bit of a film, contrary to what they believe. So you just right. take a super fine, like 12,000 grit, and you just poof. And that way, there's no, less likely to have that. If you paint or whatnot, it's going to bring up a residual issue with it later. So that, you know, again, so it all it depends on what you're building and what you're using it for is the best I can describe it. No, that, I mean, that's cool. I, I know on certain plastics that Mr. Hobby stuff, it dries like that. And then there's other plastic kits that it takes for work on. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, I know to me it makes the deck two extra thins. One's a fast drying and one is a little longer drying. Yeah, I mean I I've just used the regular to me as stuff. I I yeah. haven't really gotten into the the extra one yet. I've only been able to find it at Hobby Lobby and then my hobby shop that's up the town next to me. You know, it doesn't really carry that either. Here's yeah. uh, me. Uh, like I said, there, there's, uh, give me a second. This, this is the regular extra thin. There's a right. lighter cap. It's a really, a much brighter green cap, which is a fast drying one. Mm -hmm. And then know. there's a blue one or something like that. I think now there's a new one. I guess they're coming out with. Okay. I At least that's what I heard. I don't know if it, I haven't seen one yet, so. No. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty crazy. So what's the other two that you're using? Elmer's uh, plastic. plastic and the other is uh they're both way over behind me. Okay. I try to keep them away from the sunshine and heat to keep them lasting a lot, you know. Same with my paint, I keep them in a climate as controlled environment as best as I can for long term usage. Because unfortunately I got a lot of cans, so <laughs> And five minute epoxy. Brian is right. Uh, he's talking to a, uh, a well renowned model builder from the East Coast and Northeast. Um, we we're talking because I'm starting to get into a little foray with uh, what everybody refers to call the devil's metal photo etch. <laughs> and some of the, the parts I'm using is they recommend five minute epoxy. Uh, especially with braided line in your A and N fittings, because it gives you time to adjust it and, and put it into place, and that way you can get the proper bend to it and stuff like that, so you can get it to an area you want it to look right in. No, that's you know, that's that's pretty cool. So what other what other tools do you have, Jeff? Um, I got all the obvious. I got multiple sets of files, uh, my micro drill bits. Um, I just went and bought some uh, company we talked about before I came on the air. Oh, Despay. Despay uh, tweezers I needed. Um, they're a little pricey, but their quality is good, and that's that's the big thing. I work on quality more than quantity. So obviously them are the main things. My cutting mat, I, I can't emphasize getting one of them. I always used to be that guy. So that's not a big deal. You don't need one. After you have one, it helps. Because believe it or not, if you set it up right, you can level that model kit better than you can on a, on your bench, which is going to have scar marks, dig marks, and everything in between. Yeah, I. it, it seems like that's one that you, you're supposed to have. and. It's yep. totally cool if you don't have one. I I've used one here and there, but then I'll spill like paint or something on it, and then it you know it just or glue glue destroys the things. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it, it's funny because I have two good friends. One uh, 
who's in Alabama, Albertsville, Alabama, the other one in uh, near the Cape Cod of Massachusetts. I was always worried about buying kits, kits, kits. And somehow these two managed to arrange. And uh, the first thing I go to any hobby shop now is I look at tools. Okay, what do I need? What will help me? Yes, I've tried to, the, I've heard people say you can use a clear coat to attach photo watch parts. I have not had good luck with it yet, but I'm guessing it's probably the person applying it, not the part itself. <laughs> yeah. Then, that's, yeah, that's, I, I, I can understand that model cars. Yeah. And that's why you like a toothpick, you put it in a little puddle and then you, you know, you get a little better control, uh, especially with a, with a, a micro brush and stuff like that, which are unbelievably great tools. Um, there's different kinds. There's the ones with a little white, it looks like a Q-tip at the end. And then you got ones that look like a paintbrush itself. Now they're hard in itself, but if you run them underwater for a few seconds, it will loosen them up. You can do fine detailing with them. You can do it with with glues and multiple applications. So, all right. So, what, what are the tools you got? Uh, I got an air booth, which I'm going to be upgrading to another one at some point. Um, I've did now got. The, did you get the cheap Chinese one that has the like plastic thing? Yes. Um, and for somehow after cleaning, getting uh, told I need to clean my uh, filter, I did. And after rinsing it out fairly well as well, thought it was fully dry and put it in and apparently took out the light system. <laughs> but Oops. I can go get LED lights to put in there for it because it's, I have a depth perception problem. So I need a lot of backlighting to help me with that. Obviously, the magnifying glasses. The and the next thing, um, next model show I'm going to next month. I'll I'll there's a company called Harry's Hobbies that's going to be there. I'll pick up a bunch of more tools. I I know I'm going to need. I'll go down sometime within the next two weeks. Okay, I need this, this, and that, along with whatever refills. I'll need glues, paints, or whatnot. That's cool. Yeah. So, so what paints are you using? I've used some Alkalad, which, again, this is the painter, uh, the operator era. It's learning to control a dual action brush, which is a, a water, thanks to Brian, it was recommended. Not that particular model, but I water the brand. And an H brush, which I'm still figuring that one out slowly and learning that and understanding that. And eventually I will get a third air brush. I want ones for different applications, one for body, one for fine detailing and touching up and stuff like that. Yeah. I yeah. That I have I've got enough airbrushes now where I'm I'm really yeah. But you know, there's different types of paint that you need a certain needle size for too. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. And, that, and that's something I'm learning along the way. Right. Yeah. I I can't. Yeah, I I do okay with an airbrush, but I I rattle can. I'm like useless. I can do a rattle can to me here. I'm sorry, but uh, I'm, I've got to go with Fred Henry. That stuff for a person that's no good with an airbrush is a game changer because it lays so nice. <laughs> that's what I've heard. I've, I've I've only used the primer once or twice, and it seems it seems pretty good. Yep. Uh, I like their primer more than Mister. I've, I've used that Mister. Hobby. I like their primer more because it seems a little thinner. I agree with uh, that. I had some 1,000 surface and it seems so heavy. It's like. Oh, um, 
All right. So you got an airbrush. Are you using paint brushes at all, or? I still do. Um, do I've, got one, what, what? <laughs> I've never done any figure painting or military, and I've seen some military stuff. I've done a couple of IPMF shows, and I went to one yesterday with my good friend and a guy I'm in a club with. I said, okay, take me aside after you're all done judging and show me the different things with these planes and car tanks and stuff. He does more the tanks than the, than the aircraft or, or, or boats. There was a lot of things I didn't know to look for that I was taught. You know, right. making sure tank looks good on the table, then you look at it from the back end or the front end, and you, you see kind of like a, a, a camber issue with it. Okay, that makes sense. And, and the thing is, you can apply that to that fundamental to automotive as well. And that's that's the thing I need to work on most is my fundamentals every day to Vallejo taste better. I'm not sure. Vallejo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna taste the paint. Thank you very much. Oh well then you're you're never gonna paint figures, Jeff. Yeah. I that 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 is <laughs> I I know a lot of artists who won't they'll they'll touch a lot of things, but they won't go near a figure because it scares the heck out of them, and they'll tell you it's probably one of the hardest disciplines. Getting the skin tone right, or a boot lace color right, or a boot or a sneaker. So again, every you know, every part of modeling helps the other. They just need to learn to intersect more. And that's where I think you help a lot because you do a lot of that. Bob does a lot of them, the sci-fi stuff. Our friend Gilly does a lot of military. And, and there's so much to helping each other. And I think that's the greatest tool of all this knowledge. Right. I I mean, I, I think people just need to stop being scared. That's that's the big thing I, I think with figure painting. You're you're right. I actually get nervous and scared. And that's usually when I'll end up being the most gabby. That's an old school you probably term you haven't heard in a while. Right. I haven't heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Fred, you finally broke me. I had to laugh at that one. Oh man, that that cannot be good. Not to me it to me it as we speak. No. No, no. That that can't be healthy. <laughs> Vallejo, Army Painter, Citadel, you know, it is water based. So <laughs> what the what did you you like new kid new kid figures? Nick kid? <laughs> I'm sorry, but Rick, Rick, you won. You won, Rick. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Josh. I did my best to don't tell that joke up. <laughs> Why are you looking at me when I don't know it? Rick gets the gold medal for the day. Wow. <laughs> we need a frozen black bowl. Oh, man. Uh, oh, that Lord. I, I'm not going to lie. That was a good one. It, it took them a while to get me there, but they finally cracked me. <laughs> yeah, Bob, I... You did a really good job with that. I, I I was able to hear the conversation between him and Gil on how he was going to approach that. And he took that to a complete different level. I was really impressed with that. Um, yeah. 
And that, and that's one. And you asked me something earlier about the lives. That's one of the reasons I will go off camera and mute myself. Is sometimes it, the greatest way to speak is by listening. <laughs> right. Right. And there's so much out there that, again, I'm more visual, but some once in a while will pop and I will learn. And that goes to I'm coming overcoming my fear of, of learning to airbrush. I know I'm going to do a lot of bad jobs before I get to that one good job that I'm going to be super happy with. And, and then you'll have like 10 bad ones again. <laughs> right. Yes. And, and that's an inherent part. And, and please ask more questions and I'll answer them the best I can. That one, that question right there is 100% accurate. Getting eyes right, it don't matter if it's on a mini mini or a one six figure, eyes are the hardest thing. They have decals now, and some of the decals are really good, some of them are not. But once you kind of figure out your style of how to paint eyes it is so awesome but you know it is that um so what other paints you use jeff i use vallejo to me uh, um i've got an assortment of i don't know why i bought them but thanks to james testers i know what to do better uh and fred and brian uh i'll decant a bunch of Testers model paint, mix them with the, with the lac, the thinner, and then when I get ready to go spade, put the hardener in it and keep them going. But I I use a multitude of different things. I love the layouts, the acrylics. Everybody told me never to shoot them first, and they were the first thing I shot, and I've enjoyed them because they got a lot of the mind you they're their the aircraft set. But they they translate a lot into chassis and other parts of a car that work good from right. my aesthetic my aesthetic point of view. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. Um. So Fred, here's the thing: you want to paint one eye normal, and then you flip it over, so it's kind of this. It's symmetric. <laughs> but, I, I, um, you know, magnifying glasses are probably the one, you know, that is a, a great tool. Besides uh, the, the X-Acto knife and saws. And, no, no, uh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, let's be clear. An X-Acto knife can be a great tool, but can also be your world's worst enemy. Yeah, Fred, Fred, Fred demonstrated that last week when he cut himself twice. Wait, what? But, uh, there, there's a, a friend of mine gave me a photo etch saw that I just, especially on a lot of Ravel in Germany kits, uh, semi kits, I got their sprue. For whatever reason, the tree is thick as heck. And I've broken some pieces off, and I've actually broken two set of these are on sprue cutters. Now I'll go in there with that, saw it off, then go in with either sprue cutters or sanding to bring it out. Oh, I'm sorry, Fred Stab. I have. What was that, Mark? If someone ever tells you don't shoot X type of paint, ignore them. They're used to painting a different type of paint and get frustrated when the new X type does not spray the same. Yes, everything has its own quirk. And I found out, like with Alclad, they don't work with anybody else's stuff because of the chemical formula in it or they have a hard time, you know, Tamir, you can put a Tamir's primer down and you can put a black base coat and then 
a chrome over it. Yes. They don't recommend it. And one of our friends has got a mall that still hasn't drawn, dried in a year, I think. You're also, you know, you, you, you know, are you putting an enamel over a lacquer, which you can't do, you got a lacquer over enamel, I'm sorry. And there's things, obviously, I did not know for a long time. And for the lack of a better phrase, didn't care. <laughs> It was just a model, and until I got to the club I'm in, that I learned a lot of a lot of wonderful things. Well, the whole paint thing is a chemistry experiment to begin with. You know, <laughs> it, it is. We'll call it the Grateful Dead Act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see. <laughs> And that's the thing is, uh, Brian with uh, a certain brand, he's really, really good with it. A lot of people struggle with it, but Brian's excellent with it. The show I was at yesterday, a guy did some stuff with from a craft fair, craft paint. And if I showed you that right now, you would tell me I'm BS and that was a craft paint. No, there's, there's, no, I, I, there's people out there that could absolutely do wonderful things with craft acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. I, and this is that Chris Cortell class, right? Mm -hmm. Which he used to give all the time on YouTube on how he mastered that. And he would take some of that Walmart stuff that's just thicker than snot and turn it into just beautiful work. And there's still, you know, him and Dirk. Um, there's a, I, I haven't seen much from him, but there's a guy out of New York that does planes. He, I mean, he does the gambit of stuff. Um, yeah, Dan the Man is a master with craft yep. paint. That's another one. I've actually had the pleasure of meeting Dan last year in the Middle East. Yeah, his work speaks to me. That's one of them people, and he's just a wonderful, and he loves sharing knowledge. Right. There, yeah, there's... Heck, the, the show we had here in the town I live in, there was, um, I want to say high school age i'm not sure exactly how old but he painted a car with craft acrylic paint and dude it looked better than some of the the enamel cars that were there like i was super impressed i it's crazy but his dad also owns an auto body shop so he knows how to run an airbrush too so that's a, that's a big help So, we've been over an hour. Is there anything you want to go over before we go to the part where you're asking me questions? Jeez, I, I, I forgot about this part, so <laughs> I just, I didn't prepare for that, so. I'm just trying to think of a really good question that can bring out, how did you get involved in the hobby? <laughs> um so how i got started i was probably 13 late middle school early high school and you know i was i needed i needed a stress relieving hobby from you know all the stuff i was doing yep because sometimes video games just don't cut it. <laughs> you need something a little little bit different yes but I've, I've done models. There's probably about a 10 year stretch where I was working 60 to 80 hours a week. And if I wasn't at work, I was at the gym and, you know, or sleeping. That's basically was my life for about 10 years. But, you know. You know, we, we've all probably been through stretches we didn't build. Right. 
So that that's pretty much it. Because life, is, as they say, you get busy planning life. Life has its own plans for you. Right, 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 right. All right, Brian. What's going on, man? Lord Jesus, I should have seen this coming. <laughs> Before the chat goes off, uh oh, Fufa's getting roasted. No, I'm not coming here to roast you. Um, I I, I want to just throw something into this. Um, no, Jeff, no, Fufa's not a great builder. We all got more learning to do. That being said. Um, uh, there, there are people in, in the chat that, that know what Jeff went through a few years ago <clears throat> and doing that, going through that, that's when he really found the modeling community and he learned a lot of us as far as who we are and what we like. And, um, I've, I've come to learn that Fuffa. Jeff, we give him hell and he gives us hell straight back, but the man's got a heart, most like none I've seen. And, um, if he can put a smile or on a mill on a builder's face, he's good. And that's what Jeff likes to do. He likes to put a smile on a builder's face. He'll randomly send somebody a kit and not want nothing for it. You know, he showed up at Acme with several people's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, <clears throat> Entries? No, no, with their, with, with their, um, grail okay. kits. Oh, okay. And gave it to him. And he saw that person be happy. And that's what makes Jeff happy, especially with this community. And, um, you know, I just want to say, you know, for all the hell we give him, he dishes it right back. But th there's people that really don't know what a kind, giving, caring man he is. Right, right. He's a good man. He's a good man. And... Some people, like I said, some people don't don't realize that. But I appreciate you. Uh, over the last eight or ten months, you've become a very good friend of mine, and I appreciate you. And that's all I really wanted to come in here and say. Who Jeff really is in his heart, and he's a uh, he's a damn good guy. I'm just a human being that sees things in a different prism than most. And, and oh. it's understandable with what you went through. And um, uh, those that know, no. Those that don't, don't. And uh, I, that's up to you to tell that story to them. But um, I can understand. I, I didn't want to, but when I was going through uh, my stage four throat cancer, which is why my voice acts the way it is now. It ain't got nothing to do with ours, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and of course it was during 2020 i had to go 2019 and 2020 and my immune system was crap so i couldn't get out and do things youtube was one of the greatest things this is how i got to know who brian was i got to know who fred was mark batson uh tim brown and eventually matthew Hinman, who led to me meeting jason and all that so when people see me give a kit, they think it's random. There's not, there's a reason behind it. Because mentally it helped me get through that. And it still helps me. Because what people don't understand, there's a thing called survivor's guilt. Six of the people that when I was in my confusion room, what they call it, have passed away from their cancer. There's a reason I was spared. I have not figured out that reason yet. 
And when that, that's told to me, then I'll understand it. Can Josh, uh, can you highlight that comment? Uh, with that one? Yep. You know, it, it's at the end of the day, you can't take it with you. If you can't spread the joy and the love, not for something back. The great Dean Smith said it. If you do the right thing for a reward, then you didn't do it for the right thing, period. You do it because there's something bigger. You you are, I, I don't want to try to compare anybody, but you're possibly the next senior when it comes to sharing this community. You just want to share it. I agree with you that. want to get people into it and you, 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 you do it from all walks of the modeling community. I think my one of two of my greatest moments come besides meeting Brian and Fred and Bob and everybody at me was in Dawn. There was two moments that just took me back. One was last year at my club's show. This little kid, young kid, maybe 11, 12 at, at best. And he started, we were started talking modeling. I always try to engage whoever comes in there, especially kids. I said, you ever met Doug White? And the look on that kid's face was, that's my idol. And sometimes you don't want to meet your idols and heroes because they're not what you think. Doug was going to do an interview. The young man that he was interviewing said, go see the kid. That made the world for that 10 minutes. The world was a better place for all of us. And at that age is when, when they yep. need to be worked on to get into the hobby. You know, and if, if a, a, right. a child that age, we can excite him or her. Um, and get somebody new into the hobby we're doing our job as as model builders and i don't care what which model your which models genera you're into if you can get somebody at that age into it because that's about the age i was when i started and then there was the 30 plus year i ate us didn't know nothing about and 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 to come in here and have somebody with a Fuffa's knowledge, a Papa Z's knowledge on history, you know, and, and, and that, that's, that's meant the world to me to, no, I'm not, I'm not going to absorb much of it and remember it. But like, you know, if, if, if I walked over there and pulled the kit down, Fuffa and Papa Z and two or three others in the chat would say, yeah, that's a repop of a repop of a repop. And I'd be like, I don't fucking know. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't freaking know. See my live stream, Brian. But, um, you know, that stuff. I'll, I'll never know because of being away from the hobby for so many years. And it's somebody like Jeff that, that knows that stuff and can go out there he, he knows by the box art, you know, which pop it was. Is, is it the original kit? Is it the second, third time it was pop? And, you know, there's there's other guy in the chats that, that know that. And, and that's cool for me because if I go to build a kit and it's the first, second, or, you know, first or second time it's been repopped, I know I'm probably going to have a better quality kit. kit. Than if I had something that's on its fourth or fifth repop, and and, and you know your um, molds are wearing out, like a lot of people are experiencing with a certain reveal kit that's been recently repopped. But I, you know, I don't. I definitely don't want to come in here and make this about me, but it's about Fuffa, and it, it's a. I just wanted to come in here, and um, I asked. Josh and he was gracious enough to allow me to come in here. Just I, I ain't got nothing but good words to say about Jeff. We we give him hell. We we talk about hanging him from a bridge, <laughs> duct taping him to a stop sign or something like that. But um, Jeff is a a great human being. He really is. Oh, and thank I you. It means a lot. But 
I'm just a human being. I, you know, right. that's. And I ain't no pillar of anything. I'm just. <laughs> you, you, you have a words of wisdom and it comes from your life experience, Brian experiences. And that's what it, it's not just about knowing, it's about a being job. a human being. And you, 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 you've been through a lot. It, and it gives you a steady, calming voice. It's like somebody said, Fred's got the perfect voice for, for these videos because he's got just a deep enough tone and it's so calm and it's and it's smoothing. You want to listen to him. And that's what made Fred's Friday nights great. It was just Fred, but you could interact with people, but you, you learned and you weren't you, unknowingly learning. And the second part is if we're always learning. learning though. If you don't learn something on on what you're working on now, you're 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 not working on anything. Right. You know, um I I I learned in a recent build um that I'm having very a lot of success with and don't be, don't just don't be scared. You can put an idea in your head and freaking go for it. Cut up a door panel, cut up a dash. Don't be scared. Just go for it. And, and the second part of this, what I was going to say is, and I never stopped to think about it until Fred, Jason Hanscom, Brian, and several others said it. I went to my friend's race shop and he's a fellow competitor, but I'm great friends with him. I get two steps inside the door and his oldest son runs up. Jap, Jap, come here. You got to see what I'm doing. What do you think? It was, I thought a video game or he, he got a new RC or something. No, he was jacked up to build models. He was building them. So I sat there for a couple hours with him. Nick goes, weren't you supposed to come? I was like, don't worry about that, Nick. I'm good. Right, I'm right. Stay, here with, stay here with him. Well, Last year, his mother goes, why do you give him all these kits? It's a lot of money. He won't let us pay. He said, you're missing something great in it. She goes, what? Critical thinking, problem solving, mathematics, physics. He's learning without you telling him to learn. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's and true. His, and his moment the, the, she... Think about daughter, that, yeah. And the moment she dawned on her, she, he, she looked right, Crystal looked right at me and said, Give him as many kids as you want. <laughs> <laughs> that that and he's being quiet back there in the room and not running around like a chicken with his head cut off. <laughs> You're not outside hollering for him. Come here, get up. <laughs> and, and then you know the opportunity in everybody knows I'm scared to death of flying. Literally got I mean, Fred walked up, oh crap, first thing I see is pop up. And then he stuck his hand out because you could tell he was joking. Yeah. Then Brian. And, and to Brian's point, the, that Mark Batson, which, which I found the most unique for me, was one of his grill kits as a kid, we he built as a kid, was a phone booth kit. That wasn't the one he was most excited about. If you watch one of his videos, his brother talks about a certain kit he built. The number 39 Laguna Pepsi Chevelle. That man was overjoyed because his brother's going to build right cool that that was worth every bit of being scared to death on that airplane it was worth it and <laughs> i probably put a, a cap on over where, where a headlight bezel goes i ain't gonna deny <laughs> but i'm gonna get out of here let you get back to to doing what you're doing I just wanted to step in here and 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 say my piece on Jeff because we do give him hell. And before but, you leave, Brian, and we appreciate what he does for this community. These lives are directly because of Brian. <laughs> that is the God's honest truth. No, the lives I do are directly because of Brian. Yeah. Well, and he and he pays for the stream yard. <laughs> I need, I need yeah, like I said, he's directly, he's directly I need, I need a producer. Don't want to uh, do I, him. 
I, I feel I owe Brian a responsibility to do him right. And, and and there are nights where I think I need one or two more people that can help me manage the chat because I'm surprised at what my life has become at times. And and that is why you are a pillar of the community. That live stream you do every Saturday doesn't just have model car people in it anymore. No, it All doesn't. Kinds of what? Yeah, and I'm glad to see that. I'm really glad to see that. You know, we get we 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 get the people from across the pond. Um, you know, right. I I would like to see even some some people, more people that that are more into um uh, figures because they they have a lot of paint knowledge and layer knowledge and and could could really share that within the community. And, and you're. And uh, Brian, I can learn something from it. I, I'm going to take that as a challenge because I can do it at a certain point of day. You're 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 usually working or you're getting your yard work done, and you've got a limited time. Let me see something. One day a week, I can set like Thursday afternoon from noon to five o'clock, so it doesn't interfere with anybody else, and and gather as much as the community worldwide to join each other. It's unfortunate. Because Josh works <laughs> where Josh is three hours behind me, it doesn't work for him. But he can come home later yeah. and see it. And, and Jason mentioned something earlier about what you're wanting to do, where like Josh does, where he gets build different builders and rotates them in. That's something you need to do, and not just have you and one other person every week. I would look highly at in in rotating people that that. Oh, do, I'll do it. I mean, you know that. Um, I, I mean, if I have me any time, and I, 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 if he needs to step you, in, I mean, I've already done it once. I, I'll do it again. You, you, and Fred are uh, both on there. Jeff C. Canelli. Problem is, Jeff doesn't always get the time, and I don't want to disturb his home, at home time. But you also know the people that I'm in constant contact with that are well known. And, and of course, his contact, he'll help that. But I want somebody that, and you're right, I could switch Don and Jason and, and bring you in and Fred times with different personalities to get two different points of views yeah. but with the same outcome. So somebody might be able to take something away and learn. And that was the other thing. I was talking to Jonathan one night on one of my lives, and I said, "What have, can you tell me what you've learned from these lives? And he rattled off a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. That's when you know you're making a difference. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, because right. Jonathan, I think the world of Jonathan, but he needs to slow down. He, he, he'll he try to build a kit in a live. Man, right. Right. I've seen him slow down a little bit. I've seen him slow down a little bit, but I'm going to step out of here. I'm going to let you finish what you're doing. And, and thanks for uh, letting me in. It's almost dinner time too, for me. So appreciate you letting me in. I'll be, I'll be back in the chat. All right. Thank thanks, you, Brian. Brian. Thank you, friend, everybody. See you, bye, bye. bye, Brian. And, you know, I know these guys are going to joke and I, and I'm surprised it took as long and finally Rick did get me to crack. Um, I'm trying to think it would help because my mind is somewhere else right now. Thanks to Brian. Um, but I've learned from you and learned from episodes of meet the models from other genres of modeling. And I forgot, I think it was mini Mike or somebody was talking about doing wood. And I said, you got to see this Michael guy he had on. Right. Now, how did you get to know all of them guys? So, Michael is part of the Styrene Syndicate. Um, it's a Facebook community on Facebook. It's Gilbert Mondragon is the guy that has that page, um, and I he's got that that page is figures tanks trains cars it, it tabletop so it's you know it's a bunch of different people doing a bunch of different things 
right? Yep. Um, and, you, and that's where Doug White really resonated me far beyond modeling. And, it, and I'll always use this quote, we can all learn from each other. I agree. I I don't disagree with that. I I really don't. I I mean, I don't know. For me, a lot of these was about me getting better at the hobby. And it, I've gotten a lot better at doing a bunch of the stuff in the hobby. But if you look at each episode, even from when it first started, there's a piece of information in there that makes you a better modeler if you pay attention. Yep. And that's why I go back and rewatch them. Right. Because I know at some point I missed something. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to learn from. <laughs> yeah, I know. Bro. I, I know, uh, Seekinelli. Somehow, one of your, what your, uh, what was that, uh, appreciation build somehow made the top 10? Should have made number one, Fred, just for being Seekinelli. But what are some aspects you're learning from the modeling community that help you? I, what the biggest thing I've learned is paint techniques. I mean, and it, and it starts from taking the body, right? Yep. To the finished product. And if you, and there's a whole process. Each step is important. Right? Bingo. And I, I, I'm still not really great at it, but, you know. And here's a case in point. Most people wouldn't do this. This is not me telling, point blank telling you. Tell me how screwed up looking that wiring is to go into the block. Oh. Okay. Now, obviously, I got to, because of the way this is, I've got to figure out how to get the holes properly, which I did. And they're going to go in whatever way they do because, but I've gone back and looked at some videos. And once in a while, I'll come across something really good on somebody's page. Uh, I believe I've done this with you as well. I'll post a link on my social media about this this YouTube video. Yeah. Worthy of tips and tricks and stuff. I do it because I firmly believe in it, not because somebody's my friend. This is something I believe in. Where'd Josh go? Calm <laughs> down. Everything's okay. Don't worry, I kick myself out for quite frequently. <laughs> Yeah, very funny. See, there you go. But every time I go back and look at a video, I find something different that will help me. Jesus, you really want to scare everybody away. But uh, have you ever thought about getting a model? Do you belong to a model club? So the answer to that is no. I... There, there is one near me that I, I try to frequent every now and then, but um, for the most part, they're I call it the narrow mindedness of the community. Some of yep. these groups, all they want to be participated in is car car things. Well, I don't yep. do just cars, and they have a hard time with that. And that's but sad I don't, I don't because they're that group, you know. Which is why I'm mostly on YouTube. Now, have you ever stopped to think, okay, I've, you've, got, you've got your platform here to see if there's more car mind uh, figures in, in, in military uh, figures, uh, sci-fi stuff, and, and, or look up IPM, International Plastic Model Society's website to see if, if there's anything out there or people are near you.
All right. So, so the question to that is absolutely no. There are groups around me, but it's still I have to travel an hour and a half to go to their their meeting. Yeah. So they're they're like they, we just had a show in the town I live in. There's like three or four guys that made that happen, but they had to contact all the other little shows that were an hour. 45 minutes away to all come to that first show was a really good success because everybody wanted that show to work, but what's going to happen next year when, you know, those groups don't come around. Yeah. That's going to be the the hard part. And there's, we'll see what happens. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing how it's, it's an ebb and flow. One year will be like, 5,000 kits or bills on the table and next year it'll be 500 and there's no rhythm right. And then you realize, okay, life, different things and aspects, stuff like that. Cause a lot of the guys up in my area have moved South now. Well, th think about just that sentence. How many shows go away because of that? Yep. We, and just a lot lost, of we just lost, what was it? Wonderfest. And I think Jersey Fest is going to be canceled too this year because they don't think it's going to happen because the guys don't want to come from Florida all the way back up to New Jersey. Yep. The, the, I know there was the Philadelphia NNL show that they didn't want to put it on anymore, I believe, or somebody did. Just, and it's sad we got to find And Thankfully, we got younger builders and, and like yourself, Josh Morgan, um, and others to help carry that. You can only do so much. You still need others to, to work with you on it, but. True, true. It, it, but it's still, there's a financial backing that you have to have yes. for the shows. And it's, it's, it's the bad thing about shows in my opinion. Yeah. If, if there was a way to get that many people into a show where it didn't cost money, it was just, yeah, just rent, you know, borrow the event or the venue for an afternoon. Yeah, that's the biggest that's thing. Is the venue. It works, so. um, I can't remember off the head what it is to get in ours, but I know it, it's every club member is not happy because they'd like to have it lower, but unfortunately, these halls cost money and insurance and all that would you ever accept the responsibility of being ahead of a show to help organize it mm, i don't know I, it, it right now no i, no. I don't have the time nor the patience for something like that but give it you know 10 years and i no longer have an 11 year old he would be 1920 so i'll have more time time ish um but yeah i i could see a show working but it it comes down to the venue right that's the hard part because the venue we use for this one in town it cost us 335 dollars rent the venue for six hours i think <laughs> but if i go one town north or two towns north of me um that goes from 300 to like 1200 dollars. that's why they don't do shows in that town the the rental spaces are just absolutely you know ridiculous Yes and no, Boston Bud. Competition uh, drives. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, it, it can go one or two ways with it. You hope the integrity does, and the other parts, no. <laughs> Somebody will always try to game the system. Um, if there was one person you could interview in modeling, who would that be? So. <laughs> 
there there's actually a couple all right so one of them's no longer with us i i i tried to move heaven and earth to get chris cortell on here. um and he just with what he was going through at the time and not telling anybody and i didn't know either um he just didn't want to do it which is understandable which is understandable i totally totally understand um i from would a personal I would, standpoint i can i can understand that fully <laughs> right right um the other two is matthew model, model car video or model car or, yeah. I'd love to get him on here. I, he's kind of agreed to it, but he, you know, he needs poked, I think, to get on here. Um, and then the other one is um, oh, New York scale. Oh, Dylan? Yeah, he did uh, Miguel's Hot Rod. Yep, that's Dylan. So, yeah, I, I, I want he, he's the one that I would love to have gotten on here, but you know, it's time. Well, Cliff and him are happy to be very good friends, so <laughs> right, right. It, you know, I've, I've gotten a lot of people on here, but it comes down to like people watching too and interacting with this. It, it you know, this. Believe it or not, it takes a lot of time and energy to make this happen. I can understand that. Right. And then once this kind of became more, more than, you know, I can handle. You um, might want to hi highlight that last comment. <laughs> not Mark's, but for Brian. I know. See, and that, that's another one. I'd love to get Mark Jones on here, too. Some of the quality of work that that guy does would be phenomenal. And but, you know. There's another person in here who's built, and I'm going to meet him in a few weeks, is Boston Butts. Right. Don't worry, Boston. I won't take your photo and share it with everybody. <laughs> now he said I'm not going, but it'll be nice to finally meet the man. Right. No, I mean, there's there's a couple people that, you know, I've, I would love to have gotten on here, but, you know, time and. You know, uh, that, yeah, that they're, kind they're, of stuff, it kind of gets in the way, but. From a military area, if you can nail him down, a guy I would highly recommend is Gilly Gilbert. He's been on here. Oh. Gilly's on the are, are, sure, are you sure you watch them all, Jeff? Because there's people on. I here. haven't watched them all, but <laughs> but I try to, and unfortunately, I'm getting into the busy time of the year for me. So no, it. I'm giving you a bad time. I, yeah, there, like I said, there's there's a bunch of people. There's a couple people. Like there's one video I deleted now. Unfortunately, that's reality. But I'm going to replace it with two or three others. And then, you know, maybe I'll do another stretch at a different time or, you know, middle of summer. Who knows? But, you know. I would really like to see Meet the Ferret Farmer. He's been on. Well, that one I wouldn't watch then. <laughs> Go watch it, Jeff. Come on. <laughs> see, Jeff Zicanelli is actually a good person. Right. Contrary to the way he acts, he's a good person. Yeah, one one day he'll he'll actually drive far enough into Oregon, so he'll actually we'll get to hang out. But you know, <coughs> his wife needs to be put up for sainthood. That's just saying. <laughs> Josh had to twist my arm and babysit a ferret for a week, but we did it. <laughs> That's uh, funny. Have you had Charlie Mack at all on? Charlie yeah. Mack is a very interesting. Again, I, I've only yeah. gone back the past two years. I don't know how long you've been on. So, so I, I will tell you, this started before COVID. Months before COVID. 
Oh, I guess I'm gonna have Lewis. Have you had Lewis? Have you had Lewis and Andrew? I like where you're going with Matthew Inman because it's family, three of his multiple family members build together. And that that's what really made me like Matthew. He's a nice human being as a two, but it was a family oriental oriented thing. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I almost added an, an R to that. So, so Jeff, Max said he would only come on again is if you if you join. So, you got to go work that out with him, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh Lord, different characters. Have you reached out to BG? I know BG's got a busy schedule. He's been on. Uh, Luca. No, Luca has absolutely said no. Not in so many words, but he has said no. Yeah, it's also a lot of times time, right? You know, with what and, you got going on, and it's okay. Like I said, the answer no is not a bad thing. It really isn't for this. Not everybody <laughs> wants to do this. The internet so, could. I'm sorry. The internet could not take Charlie Mac Jeff at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. So what are you scared? Because I, I wouldn't be. I, I would have a great time. Uh, that would be the most highly you live on air. Yeah, that that that's never a bad thing, Jeff. Geez, I'm amazed I've gone this long. <laughs> but I do, I do have something I got to get to here in about 20 minutes. Um, so we do got to kind of wrap this up. Um, but no, there's, with all seriousness, I love, I love doing these. I would like to do more of them. And you know, I'm going to call away and I will do anything I can to help you. Right. But I don't think these are ever going to be a uh, week to week thing ever again. It'll be like uh, four weeks or a couple weeks in a row having a couple people on. But I don't see it being what I do all the time um, because I want to get back to doing that, you know, figures and cars. And like, I just, I just finished this one the other day. Wow. You know, and, you know, you want to talk about the woodwork. Look at the boards and stuff in that. Damn, it's beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's stuff I want to start doing again. That's why I've been trying to build when I get on the Hangouts, too. And, and just remember, the YouTube is part of your, not, your hobby, not your whole hobby. My... Right. And you and you know what I've gone through for the past few months with some uh, unfortunate tragedies, right. uh, personal friends, uh, family members. Obviously, that that's something most of the guys in the community don't realize. That's helped me keep my wits about me. Right. And and obviously, um, why I, I before I forget. Um, if everybody, if you would, please, you know, how you ever want to do it, as my, our friend Dark would say, but send out prayers or well wishes to uh, Don's model car garage. Don is um, in the hospital in Birmingham and about to go through heart surgery. You know, Don is a good human being. When you really get to know the man, you find out what a wonderful human being he is. And thank you for letting me do that, Josh. And thank you for having me on. You're welcome, man. I, you know, I know you had reservations about doing this, but it, at the end of the day, it, you know, you. I, I was more scared I was going to make a total idiot myself and more importantly, make the hobby not look like we had intelligent people in it when that's further from the truth. Well, Come on, come on! You're you're cutting yourself way short there, buddy. 
way short. All right, Brian would tell you I got just enough smart in me to be dangerous to smart people. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the ones you fear. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> I, you know, but like I said, I, I really appreciate you doing this. Um, I know next week Chuck is going to be on. And after yep. that, I don't know if there's going to be another person coming on. I'm trying to work it out. But you know, we'll Mini see. Mike, Mini Mike would be a wonderful. He's a care. He's a good character. Scale model outlaw, right? Yep. He's been on before, dude. Oh, that's <laughs> right. He was on just a couple. Yes. <laughs> my yeah. brain's going forward, and I keep forgetting some of the yeah. back. Yes. Go on my channel. Start with, start with dirt pit, and just go down the rabbit hole. So you get to you. So what I'll do is put you on <laughs> YouTube on my TV, keeping it on an automatic loop, and that gets your algorithm going. Gotcha. <laughs> Hold it. No, he said he hasn't been on. He he was on with Manny. Scale model outlaw. I'll look. But yeah, I that you know. I'd have thought I had him on though. But yeah, uh, somebody who I'd love to see you do an interview with is old Tom. Yeah, if someone else has got to poke Tom. I, I've i tried. He's I, such I, a wonderful person. I mean, that, that's another one, though. Uh, I, unfortunately, you would have to redo it during the week and record it. But Ted and Amanda would be an unbelievable one. Ted's model car, Ted's cars and guitars. <laughs> yeah, Charlie Mack was good on, good when he was in his. I don't know if that would be the case if they were both on. But oh yeah, <laughs> Lord, I'll, be, I'll be in touch, Jeff. You you know the sad part is we had Jeff model garage on here one night actually building a model on a live. I got Jeff, video proof of it. Jeff builds around, you know. I when he Jeff can, builds, right? All right. Well, we'll get this wrapped up so you get on to your task at hand. And again, thank you for having me, and thank you for being easy on me, guys. I I know that's I'm going to pay for it in the live here in a little while. <laughs> Brian, thank you for coming on, Jeff. I will see you in a minute. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right, everybody. So that was Jeff. Um, unfortunately, Jeff is cuts himself way too short at times. Um, but really good guy in the community. Um, Brian said basically everything I was going to say at the end. So I am, I'm just going to leave it at that. And I will see you guys next weekend. Um, I'm, I want to say we're going to do Sunday again. And then after that, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm not sure. I want to at least try to do two more. So, all right. Bye everybody.